I'm just Brad or BG. It's really good to be here with everybody. Uh, I live in Manhattan Beach, Los Angeles, born and raised, educated here as well, uh, uh, Harvard School and UCLA and graduate school at San Jose State. And I've been teaching, I did 25 years in the classroom, everything from third grade through continuation school. Um, I taught driver's ed one quarter. So, you know, I've sort of been there and done all of it. I realized that it's really not about acquiring knowledge, but rather developing skills and strategies and learning how to use the knowledge that's so easily acquirable these days. Reach down to your phone, grab your Google on your computer. The facts and details are available. It's how you process them. It's how you share them. It's how you communicate them. And that's really where we get to social emotional learning. From a place of sort of looking at yourself and figuring out how you best learn, you can really become a pretty effective and powerful learner. Everybody learns differently. Um, and as a, our old man, uh, Mel Levine used to say, treating everybody the same is treating everybody unfairly. So you really do have to differentiate and find a way to engage each child. The great part about the technology that we have is that we can break out, we can work one-on-one, -on -one, the kids can show us their work in, in several different ways. So we can make those connections happen. Um, so much instruction passes over the heads and through the ears of kids who feel uncomfortable and unaccepted and um, just not themselves in the classroom. So if we can get them to a place where that classroom is a safe space, then the learning can really pick up from there. Communication. And, and you're gonna say communication, well, it really begins with listening. Um, I'd like to teach a concept called active listening, where kids really sort of quiet themselves down, make eye contact, and really listen to what is said. And before, they're going to share their opinion on what was just said. They need to summarize what they just heard. And then they can, you know, share what they have. So it's not an argument, it's a discussion. And there's that break in there so that you can assimilate and understand and synthesize what somebody else has said. Um, you know, walking two moons in someone's moccasins is a really good way to have a sense of who they are. And, you know, we're all trying to develop a little bit more empathy in, in the world these days and recognizing that not everybody's path has been the same as ours. So, you know, finding a way to get kids to listen. Then once they're listened, now help them find effective words to share what they want. Uh, you know, we tend to sort of, you know, talk and talk and talk. What we're really trying to do is connect to an audience. I have a message I'm trying to share with you all. Um, and you know, that's what we're trying to do. So helping kids with active listening, clear communication. I like to teach math like it's a language because it really is. There's a alphabet of the digits. There's punctuation of the operations. There's a language of the numbers. And you can teach a kid who's really not a math kid that there's a symmetry to a math sentence and a written sentence. Conversely, if you get a kid who loves doing math but wants nothing to do with words, you can show them that a sentence in English has a structure not unlike algebra. You know, the, 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 the adjective is the coefficient of the noun. Um, and you can teach them how that processes and you can find a way to level the playing field so they can feel comfortable in the environment. Once they can master that, it's all about spending some time and doing it. One is the art of math. That is this wonderful juxtaposition of, of numbers and, and art, whether it be famous paintings or sculpture or architecture and seeing the math inherent in that. And then once we recognize the math and what we have created ourselves, then we flip it over and we start to look at nature. And we start to look at how nature reflects the uh, mathematics. So if you ever look at a nautilus shell, or you ever look at a sunflower, or you ever look at, at a, um, you hike up to the devil's post pile in, in, a, in Mammoth, 
and you see these reflections of mathematics and nature and nature and mathematics. So that's one. Um, another one I'm really excited for is a family book club. We're talking about listening, we're talking about communicating, we're talking about creating community. Well, the idea of doing a book club with your entire family so whether the, the young ones are reading yet or listening to you read to them or the ones who are emerging reading and want to challenge themselves with it, we'll all be together and everybody get a chance to read and then we'll have some questions and some follow-up and some projects and some sort of fun activities to go along with the, with the books that we're reading. Um, so I'm kind of really excited about that one. And if I can just sort of, you know, poke my head into one more that we just cooked up not too long ago, and that's a class for middle schoolers who are having a sort of a, a challenging time assimilating from elementary into middle school and learning how to navigate with, you know, several teachers as opposed to one and, and getting yourself up. And well, I mean, I guess you don't have to get up and get there that early these days. But again, we're gonna find ways to help you master those organizational skills. So much of it's uh, spoken about um, eg uh, executive functioning. And I think executive functioning is great. I like to add an emotional learning aspect to it as well, because your confidence, your composure, your poise, uh, your peace of mind, your sense of self are all aspects of how you hold the pencil and carry your notebook and organize your papers and use your calendar and all of that. So it all goes together.